Hi everybody and welcome once again to the Thermoworks Barbecue Patio. Today we are bringing the heat. We're so lucky to have Harry Sue with us. The amazing Harry Sue. You've seen his YouTube channel, you've seen him on the Food Network, and today he's here with us. And we're gonna be cooking these amazing beef short ribs. Uh, we already prepared these yesterday. Let's take a look at how. We got some, uh, some whole plate sh uh, short ribs here. What is it that we're gonna be doing with these today, Harry? A little bit of a slap your daddy, butter, cola beef short ribs. Oh, that sounds amazing. So it is my all time favorite cut of beef rib to cook. I'm going to show the exact recipe. I used to win the KCBS championship. What do we need to do to get started? So these are really, really nice beef short ribs. They are very, very thick. And uh, you want to make sure that there's a lot of marbling. And this comes with a little bit of a, what we call a fascia or silver skin. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have Chef Martin help us out. I'm going to do some trimming. So Chef Martin is going to basically run his knife underneath the fascia and trim off the silver skin. People say that the uh, silver skin will melt away when you cook it around 140 degrees. But I'm one of those people, I like my rubs touching the protein. So when I cook it, we have that beautiful fusion and that mylat reaction of the seasonings fusing into the protein and the amino acids of the meat. So we're going to be using some uh, thermometers to measure the temperature as we cook it. Since we are here at the Thermoworks headquarters, so uh, what kind of a uh, Thermoworks uh, devices and thermometers are you going to dazzle me with today? <laughs> yeah, so we're going to use, uh, certainly we're going to use an X, a Smoke X2 or a Smoke X4 for this. We want to monitor the cook as it's going along. Uh, so if we use the Smoke X4, we can monitor our pit temp and we can have our probe in each slab. So I think we'll probably do that. And of course, we'll be using our Thermopen 1 to check the tenderness and the final temperature uh, when we get there. But those things ought to be what we're doing. Sounds like a winning combination. I think so too. So we've got all the fascia trimmed off of this. What happens next? What I'd like to have you do is uh, let's add a couple of schmear. So uh, I like to schmear because the schmear allows the rub to stick. And uh, we're going to transfer it onto a, a pan. Okay. And we want to get a little bit of a uh, beef base, uh, kind of a consomme. Okay. And you can go ahead and give it a nice but gentle massage. Gotcha. So when I was teaching in England, uh, they said that I said it incorrectly. It's not massage, it's massage. So give it a massage. <laughs> we'll give it on a it. massage. Yes. yes, all right. And then the same here. It. And let's do it on both sides. I'll flip it over. Have you flip it over and let's do the other side. And this really supercharges the flavor. This is the competition trick. We also use a little bit of Worcestershire, or Worcestershire, we call it. <laughs> and uh, this will give it a little bit more flavor. So we use a combination of some uh, beef bouillon as well as a little bit of Worcestershire. So once we, we, we've got the schmears on there, what happens next? We're going to layer with some products that will give it additional flavor. Okay. So the first product we're going to put on is kind of a Texas brisket magic rub, which is a kind of a salt and pepper rub. So layer one is the kind of the black pepper kosher salt hit. It's also got additional umami products like shiitake mushrooms. It's got things like uh, powdered seaweed. So I, I kind of supercharged it a little bit to make it kind of work. That looks perfect. All right, let's get the first place USA beef rub. This is one I used to win first place USA sirloin and brisket. A beef short rib has a lot of meat in it and you really want to add more seasoning because this is going to be a long cook. You want that flavor to penetrate the protein. And it's it's hard to over season uh, this much meat, right? Yes. Now we're going to add a little bit of a umami punch, umami bomb. It's an interesting rub because it has a tremendous amount of flavor. So the next question you're going to ask me is, Harry, do you want to season the other side? Uh, my answer is no, because that's the part that of the short rib you're going to eat. And on the bone side, you really are not going to be eating that part. So you're going to go give it a pat. So I like to I like to pack my rubs. I never rub a rub because when you rub a rub, it becomes uneven. So what we want to do is now we're ready to let the seasoning sit. Okay. So that the salt will penetrate and the flavor will penetrate. I, you can cook this right away, but I prefer to let it sit for at least an hour. And if you want to let it sit overnight, that's even better. All right. Well, then we'll come back here after this is sat for a while. I can't wait to taste this because it already smells amazing and it doesn't even smell like cooked beef yet. This is going to be delicious. Stick with us. We're going to have some great food here. Hey, Martin, it looks like the uh, beef ribs are just absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. We had it sit overnight yep. with the three layers of rub together with the uh, beef consomme on top. And now, next thing we want to do is we want to cook it. Now, when you cook beef ribs, it's a three hour argument as to what temperature we want to cook it at. Okay. So there are some folks who believe you have to cook it low and slow. 
-huh. below 225. Today, why don't we try a little radical approach? You good? Okay. Let's do cooking hot and fast. Let's cook it around 300, 325. All right, let's give it a shot. So we've got our Weber Smoky Mountain heated up and we've got our Smoke X4 in there. Uh, and that's gonna be running the billows fan to keep us at temperature, as well as monitoring our pit temps and monitoring our meat temps as we cook. So let's go ahead and get those on. Now, what is this billows thing that you have going on the here? The billows is our barbecue control fan. So it attaches to the Smoke X2, the Smoke X4, and the signals, and it actually runs the temperature in your pit by blowing air into it or restricting air. And then we've, uh, because we have two racks of ribs to fit on here, we've got our air probe mounted right underneath our grate, right where our meat's gonna be. So we've got plenty of surface space to do this, but we're still getting a really accurate temperature for where the meat is. Okay, absolutely. And uh, we've got a couple of probes here. What are you gonna do with these probes here? I'm gonna put one probe into each rack of ribs so we can keep an eye on both uh, temperatures to see, make sure they're both getting done the right, the right way. Okay, folks, uh, these are called beef short ribs. There's a bone there. You do not want to poke the probe and touch the bone. So I'm gonna feel for it here and the bones are going this way, right? So I'm gonna probe it this way. So the meat probe goes between the bones, like that. And you wanna kinda of get it in deep and make sure that you don't touch the bone because the bone will register a false reading. So a couple of black belt tips here. Number one, we have the fan on this side and we have an exhaust damper. The exhaust damper must go on the opposite side of the intake so that we have a cross convection flow diagonally through the Weber Smoky Mountain so that the hot air exhausts this way. That way you can bathe your meat in that smoke for the next five to six hours. Do we have, what doneness temperature are we looking for on the ribs, right? Are we going to wrap them? What's going to happen next? I expect at 325, we will be able to get to the wrap phase at approximately between 145 to 165. And we're going to teach you guys how to do the slap your daddy scratch test. So looking at the beef, short rib, you notice how it's pooling. See it right here? So all this pooling will cause a problem. You're not going to be able to get crust, which is the Mela reaction. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little black belt tip. I am going to just tip the beef short rib like so, so that it drains nicely, just like that. Uh, you can use a block of wood, a bamboo, or you can use a piece of foil. Harry, our ribs have been on for a couple of hours. They look great. Is our bark good enough for you? Yes. Uh, so the way we test the bark is we touch it. And if it doesn't come off in our fingertips, that means that it passed the scratch test. All right. So that's a Mela reaction. You really want to allow the crust to set before we wrap. So let's go ahead and take the probes off and let's go ahead and wrap it. And let's go ahead and add a few products. Okay. Go ahead and sprinkle some rub on. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. kind of show you how to do it, like, kind of like that. It's a nice layer of rub, just a little bit like that. Okay. Go ahead and get some brown sugar on it. About the same amount, kind of? Uh, yeah, that's about right. Okay. okay, cool. A little bit of cayenne. We're going to use a Korean cayenne here. And we're going to add a little bit of more butter. So it's a butter cola. And go ahead and put some cola on it. So whether you are sponsored by Pepsi or cola, it's all good. Okay, that's good. Okay. All right. And let's go ahead and wrap it now. Okay. Two layers of foil here, Two right? layers of foil and we do a burrito wrap. So. Okay. Ready to go. Fantastic. So we're gonna put the probes back into the meat so we can keep checking their temperature as they cook. We're looking for something probably around 203. Is that right, Harry? Two-ish, 200. So we're at about 174 right there. We got 25 degrees. That's not gonna to take too long when it's wrapped, right? About an hour, yeah, an hour 15. So we'll okay. it's a really fast cook. Close it back up. Martin, the uh, beef ribs, I think are about ready. Why don't we do a probe test? Bring a thermal pen over. And we're gonna probe it between the bones, poke it, and it's pretty soft. Okay. And look at the temperature. What is it showing? 203. 203. Uh, 205, actually. Do you so. like it falling off the bone tender, or you want it a bit of a... I, you know, I don't mind having a little bit of bite to it. Okay, cool. Either Let's... way is fine. Let's go ahead and pull them. Should we just go into it? Let's go into it and pick the better one here. Absolutely oh, gorgeous. These are both lovely. Okay, so we're gonna double check the tenderness here. Yeah. Ooh, that feels really, really good. Look at that. It's like. Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead and poke it and feel. I like this one better. It's much more tender. Oh, yep, I agree. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go ahead and slice a nice big honking piece here between the bone before the rain hits us. <laughs> so, this is what happens when you do an outdoor shoot. Oh, wow. Look oh, at that. Look at that. 
Cheers. Cheers. Okay. That is a good eating beef short rib. Super delish. Salty, smoky, completely beefy, and super nice and tender. Well done. Well done to you. Okay. Mm. I can taste that we layered those flavors, right? It's not just one flavor. I can get the umami, I get the salt and pepper, I get the spice that's in there, the brown sugar sweetness, the cola, um, and you know, cooked just to the right temperature. It's just fantastic. So folks, if you ever want to enjoy a beef short rib, this is a easy way to do that. Make sure that you have a thermal pen ready and make sure you probe it for tenderness. Cook it until the crust sets, wrap it, throw a little bit of butter and cola, you're all set. That's right. Thank you so much for watching with us today. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen here today. Uh, be sure to check out more of Harry's videos over on his YouTube channel. You can also find his rubs on his website. Um, and there you can learn how to make more great things like this. Until next time, thank you so much from all of us at Thermoworks. Happy cooking. <laughs>